This is episode 35 of the Out of the Minds podcast. I'm Sean Oakley. And I'm Sam Cooper, and we're back yes. with news and things. So yes, um, let, let's get the big one out of the way, Sam. I I buggered off on holiday for a week, and they bloody dropped the new rules. I know, right? <laughs> the, the one Basically, time I... I had I had a great you know I had a great fun game for us to go through by the way that was pre rules. Uh, it was basically I've just picked up the Sky Strike Academy pack and I put I have a couple of the list of two interceptors and a defender and I went on to Hexeld and found a game and it was a great game. I got absolutely annihilated, but it was fun. But it's totally irrelevant now because you, you just don't do that list anymore. Well, I mean to be fair, new rules and and stuff aren't valid for another few days, but yeah, pre- pretty much. Um, so yeah, let's. Let's touch on the new rules, shall we, and uh, and talk about that. And then we have got a game to look at uh, towards the end of this this match uh, match towards the end of this episode. So let's start with the obvious. Um, we won't talk about things like the bumping mechanics because we've chatted about those before, and they are what's expected. Um, in fact, I think the majority of the rules changes are pretty much what they'd said and what we expected, aren't they? I think the only thing that I thought was, I at least I think was different, was that so when you if you if you're defending at range zero, you can't mod your defense dice. No, no, no. See, I don't think you've got that right. If you look at, because I've seen this passage and I know it's a couple of people. I think if you look at it, it says the enemy cannot mod your defense dice. Okay. Um, I think you can still mod your defense dice, um, but the enemy can't. So things like Duke won't work, and stuff like that. Um, I was a little surprised that you can still force at range zero. I, That's because they want force power, force users to be good. I, I get it. It's it's fair. It's you know you're paying attacks for force. Um. I think the majority of the force users, you know, have that bump in the cost. So, yeah. Um, but right, let's talk about that then, because that is the big, the big thing that I don't think we any of us really saw coming is the new list building rules. I'm gonna actually. So I didn't see it coming, but like now in hindsight, I actually think no, this was coming. Because of the way they just they'd said they were going to be scoring points and the whole divide, like do you remember the whole like divide points by ten thing? Yes, when they played the Razor Cast on stream, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, 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 like in hindsight, actually, this sort of thing was coming. Um, not I, I like I said, I didn't see it coming, but like with hindsight, yeah, no, this actually it actually makes sense. Like, because every basically now we build to twenty. Yeah, and you know. It's, I, I'm not going to go ahead and say I prefer this one, but I think I prefer this way, um, because you can do, I like the, I'm going to pick this pilot because I want to fly this pilot, I'm going to pick this because I want to fly this, and then you worry about points and upgrades afterwards because they're not part of the, the limit per se. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll say like, math is easier. Yeah, don't have to work out what my two sixty-seven point ships add up to and what I can get. It's like nope, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and I'd say are generally what most ships cost. Yeah, exactly. I want to fly four T seventies. Boom! Here's two of them at a five, one that's six, and one that's four. Right now, how do I upgrade this list to to make it work? Hey, look, I can put loads more on than I used to be able to. Yeah, because the second part is loadout points. Each pi- each pilot comes with their own number of loadout points that you can spend on upgrades. And boy, was there contention o- is there contention <laughs> over this? Yeah, ba- basically, if you're named, you get a lot more. Yeah, it's, it's, it boils. boils down. And I, yeah. I kind of understand that from a, I suppose a, th- I'm not even thematic, but uh. An interesting say, point of view. They want, but not always. Not always. But AMG wants want named pilots. They want the heroes. They want that. You know, it's the big. I want a Luke Skywalker battling, not a 
a Red Squadron veteran or so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but like, not so much. For example, the Torrent, the Blue Squadron Protector, comes with 10 loadout points and a second and two missile slots. He can now fit barrage rockets. That's well worth it. You'd ne like, you'd never even consider putting barrage rockets on a Torrent before because it would just jack up the point scots, even if they did have a second missile slot. Now, you're just like, sweet, it still costs four. Yeah. Exactly. Um, there's, um, yeah, I know. It's you know, interesting. There's things like um, in, in Resistance in the T-70, um, Kai Thorani in the T-70, I-4, um, is one, th we'll call it threat, I suppose, less than the generic, which is a five. So you, you take her, um, it fits in. Um, Care Coon is the same same threat, but gets an extra three points lo load out. So why wouldn't you? It it adds in it also adds in pilot abilities um, that just make the game I suppose more interesting. Um, I do get the other side of it that it might be a little bit more difficult on beginners because they'll ha suddenly have a lot more to learn straight off. But this is the game that AMG wants, so this is what we've got. I mean, I'll I'll disagree on that beginner thing. Like, I don't think they have to learn much more than they would have had to learn coming into X Wing anyway. Like, it's it's very I I I don't I see it as a lot simpler to say you have twenty points and you pay for the ships and each ship oh. has upgrade points that you can load out. Like that's. That's oh yeah, not no, no, sorry. complex. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I should rephrase. Yeah. I, I wasn't talking particularly from a list building point of view. Um, yes, I'd agree that it's probably simpler. Uh, I was talking more during the actual game because you're going to have more named pilots, more pilot abilities, more upgrades. That's more for them to learn, more opportunities for beginners to have missed opportunities. I guess I guess true to a point, I like... I... It's one of those things. That I, okay, so I've played two games of the new thing, and I didn't feel that. But then again, you've been playing I for didn't three bring, years. Uh, but I've been playing for years, and more importantly, I brought. Uh, I was playing separatists, and I brought a droid swarm, and that that hasn't really changed. Like, and it's like, pe uh, I feel like people are overreacting on that. Everyone's got loads of upgrades. So like, well, actually, do you you'd, you would even if you had like the points to bring in, you wouldn't bring loads and loads of upgrades because sometimes they're just frankly not that useful. Yeah. Um, and if you are helping a beginner to learn, don't go out and be like, "Here's a guy with twenty two upgrade points, loaded up with seven different things." <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, um, I suppose there is that. The... That aspect of teaching someone hasn't changed. No, no. You, you know, we're still the community that we have been, and you know, we're still very friendly towards beginners we want people to play you're not you know x-wing isn't a isn't a gotcha kind of game is it no it's a it's a here's what i'm gonna do here's what you should do blah 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 blah, blah. um so yeah um anything else you really want to touch on right so you've had a chance to play uh whereas i haven't because i've been skiving off so, I've actually quite liked to hear your views on the objectives and the different scenarios. Okay, so I've played two games, and the, I've only played one mission, because we decided at club night, we're just going to play, we're going to have a, a couple of tables, just going to play one mission, try out the new thing, and it was salvage mission. And that's one where you have to go and pick up boxes. So you get a scenario action to pick up a box, and then you score a point for every box you have at the end of each round. Uh, you can you can't slam while you have the box. You can't execute advanced maneuvers while you have a box. Um, and if you suffer a crit or are destroyed, you drop a box and your opponent places it within range one. And it was very interesting because uh, we quickly worked out that if you so there's you place one in the center and then each player places two boxes and they have to place one in their half of the board and one in your opponent's half of the board. Uh, so you have like some control on where the objectives are, but we worked out that if you can do a five straight, you will reach the center objective. So if you have an I one that can do a five straight, you can grab the objective straight away. And if you have three of the objectives to so your opponent's two, you're going to start ticking up points. So your opponent has to come at you. And it was really interesting 
Uh, and so it was like there was like a clock. It feels like you can put a clock on your opponent that they have to actually do something to make you lose. But and I won both the games. But I won both games because I was able to kill two to three of my opponent's ships, and the points you get from that will vastly swing the game in your favor. So like objectives are important, and they'll put a clock on your opponent. But it definitely felt like the X. You still need to murder people in X Wing. So if you can, you know. Blitzkrieg your opponent and smash them fast. That's probably still the 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 most valid strategy. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much. And what I liked about this mission, and then I realized, like, so scramble the transmissions is another is a different mission, uh, and it's like the salvage mission. It, you benefit from having low initiative to pick from pick, picking up boxes because you can move first, grab the box, and. What are your opponent can't stop you realistically unless you bump, and then they they have to kill you or luckily roll a crit or if you have ways to do it get a crit. Whereas scramble the transmissions is the opposite. Uh, your scenario action called scramble, which is what you use to take control of the objectives, you you do it and your opponent can't stop you if you get within range zero to one. So if you're higher initiative, you can come along and say actually doesn't matter what you've done, this objective is mine. I will score a point at the end. Um, and so I think list building is gonna like is gonna come down to what what missions are you gonna be playing at tournaments? Like what? Because uh, some lists are gonna be really good at some missions, and some lists aren't. Like a three ship list on a salvage mission is gonna struggle. As whilst the three ships are gonna be really powerful, if I rock up with seven, I can have like say I bring my vultures form, which is five vultures, Captain Seer and General Grievous. Seer grabs a box, a vulture grabs a box, sits on a rock because he can do that. Uh, and then I grab another box of the other vultures, and all of a sudden I've got three boxes. Two are pretty safe. Seer and the vulture on the rock are pretty safe. One will be on a vulture, and he's likely to die. But like then we could just have a fight. And if you if I get if you don't like get like actively start murdering me i'm gonna slowly tick away and vultures are not worth very much points when you kill them shock horror <laughs> yeah i'd say they're uh they're, they're pretty good value for the points in them um yeah so it's it's interesting so, they, so really obviously wanna... they they did mention that on on stream haven't they they said that the likelihood of being able to build a list that's good at all the scenarios isn't great. You're going to have to build one that's good at two, maybe three of the four. Yeah. I suppose you you pick two scenarios, you build something that's good for that, but also for a dogfight, and then you're covered. Oh, one thing I've got. Obstacle placement has always been important in X-Wing, right? Yes, yeah, but, of course. But not super obvious into how to benefit from obstacle deployment. In these satellite and transmissions and box um, missions, it becomes very obvious. Remember that me talking about that five straight grab a box? What yeah, if yeah. I place an obstacle where your five straight would land? Yeah. Yeah, because you can't place obstacles on um, the objective, but the you object. can place it anywhere within it. You just can't place it touching. Yeah, see, I, I, I obviously have been spending a bit of time in the evenings thinking about this over the last couple of days. And, you know, I was thinking that for ones where you just need to be within a certain range. You know, you're going to want to stay near that near that objective. If you can place one of the large, you know, the, the long debris that f will force you to go out round yeah. and things like that, that, yeah, there'll be some in, you know, turn zero has always been important, but I think this will just add another layer to it. It's, it's not even another layer. It's now, now you can be like, I know what I need to do to gain advantage. Again, I'll say this from a droid perspective. I'd be like, okay, I place a rock near one of the objectives on my side. A vulture's going to go land on it, grab the box. I place another rock on the opposite side of the center thing. If you haven't already done it on the other side to block me, that means you can't just jet forward and grab it. Yeah. Uh, and just stuff like that. It's like, you can, you can now, like, ob you can now obstacle for advantage, but in a lot more directly rather than be like well i'm a joust at this so i want the obstacles sort of clustered in this sort of area vaguely now it's like here are things that we need to fight for and i can obstacle for advantage um i think chris burnett made a point like he's thinking people are gonna just gonna go back to taking gas clouds because droids exist maybe 
Uh, I think it's I think it'd be a relevant strategy because if like what what I did in the two games is I had a, I literally had a droid roll up, grab a box, and sit on a rock, scoring me points each round. Yeah. Um. And if that was a hold an area um, mission, he just sits on the rock and holds the area each round. It's it's it's, it's a weird. It was a really weird thing because like not you can't. It's very hard to stay still effectively with most ships. Unless you like, have to most, have ship, a... most ships, most ships can stay within range one of a thing, but like you'll get all, like you'll have to awkwardly turn. Yeah, unless you can just sit on a rock. Unless you can just sit on a rock, or do a do a reverse indefinite. Is it something in first order with Muse that keeps stripping the stress that you could do an indefinite stop? Yeah, but then you're tying two ships down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, like. Like I said, I, I only can only really speak from the separatist point of view, which Vulture, which, by the way, Vultures are still really good. The Trade Federation drone may have zero loadout points and can only take independent calculations and struts, but by God, are they going to be effective at scoring you points? Because yeah. all they need to do is hold an objective for two turns, and your opponent, your opponent killing them will just tie. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, some, definitely some interesting thoughts on the new rules, and we'll probably expand on yeah. those more as we get to play them. Um, yeah. I believe that Tin Squadron have got a stall championship coming up, or stall event, shall I say. <laughs> I'll edit that out and start again. I believe Tin Squadron have got a stall event coming up at the end of March, where we will be using new rules scenarios, so that'll be quite interesting to see how that shakes out. Yeah, I think we are currently waiting on all the Adepticon rules that they print out to finalise what we're doing. And if it takes too long, then we're just going to make it up as we go along. I was going to say, Adepticon's like the same weekend, isn't it? So Yeah, but they'll print out a rule set beforehand to like say what's happening. Just cause we want, well, I think we're waiting for a little bit of guidance on how to do like scenarios. And if not, I think we're literally going to be like, here's a bag, we're going to play all four scenarios, but we don't know which one will be which game. Fair, fair. I've got a feeling it'll be you randomly pick one for each game. As in, each game, um, yeah, personal I mean... game, rather than as a general store event, uh, much like Crisis Protocol does. So Yeah, I can see that. I, I, at the same time, I could also, I, uh, in X-Wing, I could definitely see just being like, round four is this mission, round two is this mission, just to yeah. make things eat. It makes table setup easier. Yeah, that's true. Because you can go in between rounds and be like, this is the mission for this table, so we'll set it up. I mean, actually, maybe maybe set it up is irrelevant because every single every single mission has a satellite in the middle, and the other ones are placed by the players. So, who knows? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this week's game. Uh, while yes. I sneakily stream it to you, because I realise I haven't done that yet. Um, so. Uh, this is a game I played the week before last uh, in the Sith Taker League. But as Fortunes would have it, we ended up playing what was then the 2.5 rules. Uh, the ones that LVO used and Sith Takers had used. Um, so not the not the exact rules. Um, there's no scenario play. Um, but it is a, a reasonable indication uh, and there's some interesting things to talk about. The bumping rules, for instance, are are almost the same. The obstacle rules are almost the same. So, yeah. Um, so, after my disastrous showing at the Sith Taker Open, uh, I went back to something I know I can play. Uh, and I've got the three T-70s and Kaz. So, Commander Poe, Jess... Uh, the Red Squadron Expert, and then Kaz. Um, nice. And then I spend the entire Sith Taker not taking this list and worrying that I'm going to get Arkdosh all the time, uh, and my opponent has brought uh, and my opponent has brought Ray, Poe, and Tally. Oh, that so, sounds fun. Yeah, so uh, decked out, he's got C-3PO uh, sorry, not Ray. Han I got it right. Han, Poe, and Tally. So six, six, five. Yeah, but Ray's there. Yeah, all right, Ray's there. Uh, so he's got C three PO, uh, Ray Gunner, Trick Shot, and Title. Uh, it's Trigger Happy Poe with R four Jamming Beam Overdrive and Heroic. 
and then tally with heroic and I think that's a procket. I'm trying to remember now, it's been a while, the card is hidden. Uh, apologies for the no overlay for those that are watching on YouTube, but we'll run through as, as we went. The damage isn't so important. Um, right, so do a quick chat about turn zero. Um, I obviously want quite a wide open space because I want to fly as a block. Um, and I semi reasonably achieve that. Um, we've got the three small rocks, a mid rock, a mid debris, and the longish gas cloud. Uh, the, the streaky bacon one. Um, and we basically have the two of the small rocks and the medium rock spread across my opponent's edge. Um, the moustache rock and the streaky bacon are in my two corners, but at about three and three. And then the debris smack in the middle. Um, and that gives me some nice lanes through the middle to take my block if I need to. Sounds good so far. Um, I'm assuming you can see this. Yeah, I can see Sweet. it. Um, and then, I mean, target priority. I'd like to get on hand if possible, because obviously one agility, he's going to burn down the quickest. Um, but if something else presents itself, we'll shooty shooty. Um so let's get going um and i do a sort of standard three straight up the board on the first turn try and get up past the first obstacle uh jess locks kaz to give the reroll from the m9 droid uh we obviously do have to roll for this because we have an overlapping six um uh, by god i roll more crits on the uh on the gold dice than I ever roll in real life. Um, but the player order, I mean, it it's largely irrelevant because I'm flying as a block, certainly in the early stages. My opponent knows where Poe is going, so... Yeah, but at some point it is going to be relevant, is the thing. Ironically, I think by the time it becomes relevant, it's not relevant. Oh, um, sp speaking of it, though, it, it was relevant in the game. It, it was surprisingly relevant in the games I played on Thursday. Uh, one time, Grievous got to go before Scorch, and that won me the game. Nice, nice. Because I was able to grab a box before he did, and Scorch bumped. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I then do another three straight, which pretty much puts me halfway up the board with my block, and my opponent is basically slowly circling down the other side. So after two turns, I'm halfway up one side, yeah. Han and Poe are halfway up the other, and Tally is in the top right corner. And under new rules, chance engagement, neither of you would have gained a point. No. So I turn in here, uh, because it still leaves me options on the next turn of where to go. Um... And I can see what Han and Han and Poe are doing and where Tally's going. Um, and they're still just moving slowly, start to bank around the corner. Um, and yeah, the where's the speedy bumpy thing? I've lost it. Um, the interesting one doesn't happen until the next turn, I want to say. Um, so I I just do a one straight, but I actually barrel roll up towards my opponent's board edge because I think that'll give me enough space to do a two hard inside the debris field in the centre. Yes. Because if if Han, ha Han does a sloop um, so that he can basically just backtrack on himself, but if he hadn't have done a sloop, then that two hard is going to catch him regardless of where he goes. Yeah, and looking at where everything is, because you're you're basically in the top left quadrant of the board, facing toward the right. Yes. Like if if, if sorry, if you the spec if you the person listening to this are on Sean's side of the board with your resistance four, 
your your block of four is on the top left quadrant facing towards your right, and the opponent's three ships are all sort of scattered in a, in a loose diagonal line in the bottom right-hand quadrant, with hand yeah. facing backwards. Yeah, hands basically going back around that corner. Um, Poe realistically is probably at least one banking up towards me to get away from the moustache rock. And Tally's either going to go fast away or maybe just a one hand keep distance. So, I'm like, what do I do here? I... Because hand slooped, I don't think I want to do the too hard. That's just going to leave my flank open to um, to Poe coming in. Um, I mean, I'm looking at this and thinking a one straight is fine. Again. So I... Or two, oh, wait, no, wait, can Kaz... No, Kaz can one straight. Ka so Kaz, can, gonna... Kaz can one straight. So we roll dice. And I don't one straight. I do one straight. Ignore me. I do one straight. Um, I thought about going faster and actually jumping over the other side of the rock, but I just wasn't sure if Kaz and Poe clip it. So I thought, play it safe, and then the one straight gives me a much better idea. Um, Hello, Tally. Yeah, so Han does another sloop. Um, Poe actually turns down. I think turned down before and then Boost, so he's down the bottom side of the rock. Um, and then Tally's come in a bit faster because um, we we're talking about it afterwards, and my opponent thought I would end up doing the too hard down, which actually would leave him in quite a nice position for the next yes, turn it would. To, to smash him. But I was just like, one, the fact that Han slooped. Turn me, turn me off that because it's not going to achieve me anything. Um, so I've ended up with a couple of couple of obstructed shots into Tally. Uh, Pose managed to pick up a lock, um, and I don't think I do a whole lot. I think I plink a shield off. That's fine. It's mostly range two and three obstructed. Yeah. Wasn't expecting to get a shot. Um, now, I've committed myself to going past the the debris field, but I'm all right with that because where my opponent is, he can't really turn in, especially with all his ships. Tally's stressed. Uh, can do a too hard and probably boost, but... At this point, I think I go reasonably fast with my ships to stop Tally being able to get Ark. Poe can turn up, but Han's still not in a brilliant space to to get shots either. Also double yeah. stressed. So I don't mind just taking a, a turn out and and I do. I, I three right, so I, I do make a cock up here. Uh so I three straight and two straight, uh, Jess and the Red Squadron and Bank. And I did that to make sure that I didn't fail the boost. Um, but what I did do was boost Jess right into the way of Kaz. Um, because I mean, it, and obviously new rules that can be dangerous. Um, yeah. Luckily, Kaz escapes. Uh, Tally shoots forward and then just takes a lock onto Poe. Uh, and Poe bumps into the back of Kaz. Um, and also luckily escapes. Um, Poe does turn in and locks focuses uh, onto my Poe. And then Han banks round. Uh, he's got range three on everybody. He's obstructed on Kaz and... Yes. Um, and so he elects to go into Cass, which I think is an interesting choice. Um, namely, because I also just realised that I've picked up one too few green dice. Oh, there you go. I've remembered. It's fine. Uh, so Cass rolls six green dice and gets one of eight. 
Of course. But like, about right. But it only takes one damage, and that's fine, because I'm against a 5-6-6. Six, six. Kaz's ability is going to be online for a long time. Yeah. Um, I've already r 5 the original damage away. Uh, Poe goes into my Poe, uh, lock focus, and strips two shields. Which, again, I think is a fairly reasonable for an unmodded defence. Um, and Jess manages to plink one shield off Han in return. So, reasonably fair damage trade there, I think. It's not much much on either side. Um, but I've got a reasonable turn in now to to start presenting a danger to to Poe and Han. And I can basically ignore Tally this turn. Uh, and so I do. I turn in Jess and um I turn in Jess and the Red Squadron and Focus. Uh Kaz does a one hard, takes a focus. Um I then use Commander Poe to attempt a barrel roll. Uh just to really spread the kill net out. Um doesn't quite fit. And I wasn't sure if it would, but it's effectively a free action. So okay, yeah. I, I gain I gain a stress, but I'm okay with that. I've got an, you know enough space to do the blues I need to on the next turn. Uh, so I I think it's definitely worth a try, especially if Poe his Poe tries cutting in there. Yeah, is your Poe in trouble there though? Because like I'm looking at your Poe like if that barrel roll did work, like you're not in the way. But like I, my assumption is Poe's doing like a too hard. No Poe four case. Okay, 4Ks. Okay, I was going to so, say, like, if Poe's if yeah, turning no. in, like, this uh, goes badly. Yeah, I wasn't sure where I'd end up and what space there would be. So, because I also wasn't sure if I'd end up having to barrel roll Jess or the Red Squadron, depending on where they ended up. So, I thought, play it safe, 4K. The likelihood is I don't get shot, and maybe I get a range 3 shot back. Um, but if I don't... I'm not shooting, but no one's shooting at me. I've still got three shots properly. Um, so the barrel fails and I take stress. Um, Han banks right in front of my entire list and then does a boost to get out, I think, of Kaz's arc. Um, and his Poe his po does a 4K, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. I never would have called a 4K there. Um, and so we're sitting, I think, range two of Jess, who's the yellow one, um, but unmodded. Um, so he does take the range two shot onto Jess. Uh, now this is an interesting one. He doesn't do any damage. Han shoots into Jess, gets three hits. Uh, he uses the force for three hits. Uh, and I roll focus blank. Now I know I've hey. got. I've. I, well, no, no, I've got a focus, and I've got Jess re rolls. Um, but I also know I've got a range two shot back at Han. All right. Three shields is a lot of damage to take. But I think my Poe might sneak a range three shot. Um, the Red Squadron definitely has a range three shot. And then if I don't use either mod. Yes, I take three shields. But I then have effectively a double modded range two shot back into Han. And if I've... St he's only got two shields left. If I can plink those with one or or the other of the ship, the other shots, I can start putting crits through if I roll crits. And if not, just smash damage through, get half points. So, in the end, I elect to take all three shields. Well, I mean, you're not half pointed, so this is actually kind of fine. Um, Poe does have a range three shot uh, and rolls nothing. Uh, Kaz has no shot. The Red Squadron uh, rolls three hits uh, and takes the shield and the uh, the last two shields and the damage. Uh, and then Jess uh, re rolls for two hits, basically. Uh, he gets one evade, so I put another one through. So not quite half. Just 
okay. But, but getting there. But getting there. And I ummed and for quite a while after this game, actually, whether taking those shields was the right call. Um, because in the end, the focus was irrelevant. I didn't use it on attack. And the re-roll netted me one extra hit, which admittedly was the hit that went through. Um, yes, but I don't. I think that's not the way to look at it. No, I. I think maybe what I should have done was probably re-roll both the defense dice with Jess's ability. Seen what the results were after that, and then likely kept the focus for attack. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but. Hey ho, it kind of worked out. Um, so yeah, so we're going to the next round. Um, and I too hard Jess, uh, in front of Poe. Ah, uh, fits with nubs in between. Nice. Which means I You'd like to see it. I mean, I know Poe's going either straight or banking, likely in because he's not going to want to bank away. Or, sorry, or turning in, because obviously he's got the R4 for the too hard. Um, but it, it lets me get a stress-free um, focus. Um, the green, Red Squadron closes his foils, uh, turns, and then boost, uh, boom. focus barrel rolls in behind Jess. Uh, basically, that should cut off any of the blue straights. Which is up to a three, uh, yep. for, forcing a bump. Uh, so that that basically means if Poe's turning away, neither of those two shots are get, uh, ships are getting shot. Uh, and then Kaz turns in as well to to block the um block the turn to the left. Yeah. Um. So yeah, okay. New rules. Poe's still going to get a focus. Um, but it's it's a stressful. It's narrowing down his options. Um, my pose going first this turn. It uh, does the three straight. I did consider turning down with Poe, but honestly, at this moment, I think hands my my target. He's one off half, and if I can get three good shots into him, I could conceivably kill him. Yeah, no, that seems like a good plan. So the three straight. Puts me just the other side. Hand's got to go up there. So uh, Poe does block uh, and then takes the red focus. So he's at range zero of Jess. Uh, and this is interesting. So um, he does a two bank, clears the stress, um, and then coordinates Tally, uh, a target lock, which she l links into a boost. Uh, and it means Jess is about to eat a... Um, Double modded procket. You'd like to see it. Um, so, yeah, Poe has a range two shot into Han, uh, and I roll hit, hit, crit. Uh, and he elects to take hit, hit, crit. Could have raided it. Rolls a blank. Um, I'm wondering whether he was thinking that Han's got a high chance of dying here, so you keep the force and the calculate he got from the coordinate for attack and just try and deal as much damage on the way out. I mean, I think that makes sense. Uh, and the crit, if I remember rightly, is a fuel leak. So Han has taken five hulls, so has got three left, and I've got two T-70 shots coming into him. Um, I think one range three, one range two. Um, a Jess's will be double modded. So I, sh I have got a conceivable chance of hitting Han here, uh, killing Han. Now, interestingly, again, uh, he shoots with Han. He's got a choice of, I think, a range two into Jess or a range two obstructed into Kaz. Uh, and Alex to go into Kaz. Okay. Um, it did seem that Kaz was his, his main... At priority, I suppose. Um, yeah. Despite the fact that Kaz wasn't actually doing that much damage. Uh, he rolls three hits. Kaz rolls two of eight. So, 
He's... Yeah, but there is something to be said for just focus firing and getting one of your ships off the board because <clears throat> I I feel like if he if he looks at this and thinks I have the best shots into Kaz, just get him off the board. But he's he knows that Jess is taking a procket. Well, I... Is Jess taking a procket or is Kaz taking the procket? No, no, Jess is taking the procket. Um, okay. He used, he target locked Jess with Tally. All oh, right. Um, I would have shot into Jess, even if you don't do anything. The likelihood is you either strip the focus or you strip her reroll ability. True. Yeah. Making the procket that much more damaging, and you know you could conceivably she's got full health left. You could conceivably initiative kill her, certainly between those two. Yeah. Um, because then. Poe elects to do the range one shot into the Red Squadron expert. And he did have a range one into um thing into Kaz. Uh and I think I take a sh two shields from that. Because I keep my focus because I'm gonna want it for attacking Han. Or Tally, depending. Um uh, and then, yeah, Tally does the procket into Jess. Uh, gets a little unlucky. Rolls. Hit, 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 crit. Uh, I, uh, which is enough at the moment to kill. I evade blank. I re-roll with Jess's ability into a blank. So I take hit, hit, crit. Direct will do it. And it isn't. I can't remember what off the top of the head. I think it might be in a damaged engine. But don't quote me on that. Um... So, so I shoot back. Um, uh, and I think that was Kaz into Tally. Uh, and I do nothing. Uh, and then I do the Red Squadron, who does range three into Han. Uh, hit crit. Uh, and Han takes the crit. And the fuel leak, which kills Han. All right. Uh, I'm guessing, actually, one of those must have... Maybe Kaz didn't have a shot and it was Jess into Tally, because we're back on dials. But, effectively, that's mission accomplished. Yeah. Um, I've... Jess is on one. And Kaz, I think, is on two or three at the moment. Um... And the other two T-70s have lost two shields. But for that, I've killed Han. Which is one of the big hitters in the list. And the procket's gone off Tally. So Tally is now just a, you know, a standard RC2. Yeah. Um, yes, I've got Poe to worry about. But it's a lot easier not worrying about that large base bowtie turret. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, so this turn, I basically shoot Jess out the way. Give her a bit of breathing space, disengage. Um, I think I make two fundamental errors here. One I think is acceptable, one I think isn't. Um, okay. So I I move Jess out of the way. I think I've won straight the Red Squadron just to get rid of the stress, possibly block. Um... Kaz, I turn down in case he decides to just go fast with Poe. So that Kaz has a shot facing out the other side. He might just, considering where the two T-70s are and the fact that Jess is on one and the Red Squadron's stressed, he might think maybe it's worth just a full straight disengage. Um, and then Poe, Poe, as I'm looking at my tiles, I'm thinking I do a one straight. And then I boost round that debris field. Okay, that, that looks like that fits. That's my plan. But... So, yeah, Jess goes. Um, Red Squadron goes. Oh. Kaz does a one hard and clips oh. the rock. And yeah. I didn't zoom... Oh, I can't zoom in on this. But as you, you can see, it is. It's by, by millimetres. It, it's that close that when I eyeballed it, I didn't think it was close at all. Um, I, I kind of 
maybe I should have done the too hard, but I wanted it lined up with the T70 so that if he does shoot straight. And in hindsight, I think a four straight blocks there. So maybe a one hard in the other direction might have been the better move, but I wasn't convinced that fit, and I don't want to self-bump. I mean, that is fair. So, yeah, a fortunate on the rock. Um, Tally shoots over, uh, and then boosts, rotates, uh, and Poe turns in. Uh, and then, to, to add it, I one-bank Poe onto the debris field. Ah, uh, yeah, ah. Uh, I was literally in the game going, I swear to God, I put in a one straight because I was going to one bank boost afterwards. And uh, like, always double check your dials. Yeah. But uh, in the end, it's it's not as bad as it could have been. I think I dodge um, damage on both the obstacles. Um, but you do take one from the rock, right? Or is that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I took one from the rock. I'm um, sorry, you can't see Kaz, but I dodged the roll on both. Uh, yeah. And I think Kaz, I want to say, is on four at the moment. But don't hold me to that. It might be three. Um, but Kaz is okay with that. As I say, it's half, but I'm ahead on points. And actually, Kaz is not too bad because he can then turn in again and suddenly present to, to Tally. Um, on the next turn, and Poe's got away with it, basically. Um, and, yeah, there's Poe's stress. Oh, no, I did take damage on Poe, sorry. Lost the shield. Uh, Tally shoots into Kaz, and I didn't think did anything. Um, so, yeah, kind of just a disengage and and start again. Now my son, I feel like you have to be on the advantage here, right? I think so. You, you still have all your ships, and as long as you don't completely cack this. No, exactly. Um, now my assumption is Poe does too hard to the left here around the top of the debris field, so it's like, how can I leverage that? Um, and I basically I just four K Jess because I can't really get her on target or within range of everyone for her rerolls. So it's like turn her around, but put some distance. Um, I think I won straight. Oh, I'm trying to remember what I did. Did I won straight? Hang on, we'll play it. I might have too yeah, hard. Oh yeah, so I too harded the um red squadron away, uh, and then tried to boost, but that clips the the gas cloud. But that's fine. It was more about because the next turn I can talon the red squadron, bring Jess in. Suddenly they're together again. Uh, and I think Poe... So his... Uh, I turn Kaz around the rock and focus. Tally turns away. Um, barrel rolls. Uh, and then Poe self-bumps because the boost didn't fit, but dodges the damage again. Um, and he boosts focus his Poe in behind. So he's got a range one shot into my Poe, uh, which is nice. He rolls three hits and two crits. Uh, Poe Natties, uh, and that nice. and that is a damaged engine. That one is definitely a damaged engine on the crit because I don't think I do another hard turn. Um, Tally goes into and Tally just shoots into Kaz, who evades it, uh, and then Jess goes into Poe, who evades it. So, all in all, not too bad. Um, post down to two, but his po really is limited on on where it can go. Um, so what I do here is red squadron two hards focuses into a barrel roll, trying to get a block on Poe. Um, basically, the only way I'm not blocking Poe is this: if he turns right, and that means he's probably boosting and barrel rolling and not shooting me, or he turns left. And then Jess will have a shot, and he's likely not shooting the Red Squadron. Yeah. Um, Kaz keeps basically chasing Tally and forcing Tally to, to do stuff. Uh, and Poe does the 4k. Uh, so, ironically... Oh, that's an yeah. aggressive one. Actually, no, I actually like that. So do I. I didn't see it coming. 
Yeah. It does. It just does a one straight, straight in, uh, and focus locks Jess. Yeah, because I, I, he's got a good chance of just killing Jess. Yeah, for sure. He's got a range two shot, and Jess has got one left. So my Poe shoots into Tally uh, and gets her down to one hull. Uh, his Poe shoots into Jess with three hits, so I can't evade that. She natties, but no. Uh, Something heroic happens. <laughs> yeah, Lulo shoots Kaz, blanks into blanks with heroic. Tally shoots Kaz. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, Tally. Um, Kaz actually it takes the Poe shot, uh, f- f- hit, hit, crit, uh, and he takes, I think, the, nothing by the looks of that. Oh, no, it must have been the two shields. Sorry, it takes two shields because he was untouched. So I've lost Jess, but... Tally's on one health with Kaz right behind, Poe right in front. Um, Poe is almost dead but can't get initiative killed. Um, and the T uh, the Red Squadron has still got four shields and a hull. So it is slightly swinging back towards my opponent, but I still think I'm probably in the advantage here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I basically too hard with the Red Squadron focus barrel roll. More so just to get in a position get where... Out of the way. Yeah, get out of the way. I definitely... I don't think Poe can turn around there to get a shot on me. Even a too hard, I think the boost would take you past. Um, I think I'm in the way for a barrel roll. So it's just about... Too hard, barrel roll to the left, boost to the right. I reckon that'll swing you around enough. Maybe, but then you've probably got Poe behind you. Yeah, I don't think it's a good choice, but that's how you get the shot. And it also sets me up the next turn for a simple 1, 2, 3 straight 4k next turn to come back in. Um, Cast turns right in behind Tally, takes a focus. Uh, Tally just goes forwards. It looks Uh, like trying to block Poe. And I believe it. So I almost dialed in a one straight with my Poe. Uh, oh, your Poe looks sad. Yeah, my Poe is sad. So I almost dialed in a one straight with my Poe. Uh, I didn't. I changed it to a two. I think the one would have fit. Um, but there we go. Um, side bump. I take the red focus. Um, his Poe moves in. Takes lock focus on, on my Poe. So... I mean, we're pretty sure that my Poe dies. But my Poe shoots his Poe first. Uh, and gets four hits. No, oh, his Poe was shooting there. Oh, is it? Okay, I'm sure I moved first. But anyway, Okay, his Poe shoots into my Poe, gets four hits. Um, I take them because I was going to die anyway. I only had two greens. He had to spend his focus to do that. Uh, I then return fire. Um, hit crit crit um, and he takes the last shield and a crit uh, and that crit I believe is a damaged sensor array so Poe can only focus yeah which makes Poe sad uh, yeah and then my Kaz has a shot um, and this is t- Tally into Kaz oh, so, yeah, so uh, she's deals the damage poking out the back isn't she deals the damage uh, my Kaz back uh, more damage on Poe, but not quite enough. Not quite enough. So Poe's on one, Tally's on one. Kaz is on, I think, four, because I'm still firing three green dice. Um, and then I've got a T70 with one shield. So, in theory... Not liking in, your chances. In theory, either of his ships can initiative kill either of my ships. Um, but by the same extent, if I don't die, I've got a reasonable chance of plinking that one damage through. Yeah. If I can kill one of his ships, then I feel, without losing one of mine, I feel the game is mine. Um, the Red Squadron just does one straight and takes a lock onto, um, 
Poe. Uh, Kaz, I think, did a one straight in focuses. Uh, and then Poe bumped. Yeah, Tally moved off. Uh, I think with the two straight and focuses uh, and Poe bumps. So I've actually got two shots coming into Kaz now. Um, who is forced to spend his focus to evade. Um, it doesn't take any damage from either of them. Shoots back into Poe at range zero, uh, who spends his focus and doesn't take any damage. So uh, a null round. But now Poe's stressed and facing the wrong way. With rocks to complicate where he's going. So yeah, there's the 4k from the Red Squadron. Uh, I slam and am with uh, with Kaz. Just to get him up. I think I did too hard into a 2 bank or a 2 straight. Just get him up towards um, the Red Squadron again. Um, Tally goes round. Boosts into a rotate. Uh, so she has got a shot, but it's unmodded. Uh, and Poe turns. Fix in yeah, interestingly, he fixes his... Damage sensor ray then takes a lock, uh, and apparently uh, and, and gets a stress. But Poe isn't shooting, um, and Tally did nothing basically. Um, yeah, so now this isn't this is the interesting turn because we're we're running out of time. There's five minutes left. Um, I two bank the red squadron and take a focus. I've already got a lock on Poe. Um, Kaz, two hards, slams into another two hard, just in case I, I thought, just in case I can clip Tally. And if not, I'm presenting an arc down there, although I'm disarmed. So I'm not shooting, but if I can clip, I'm stopping his options. Yeah. And if I don't, I'm likely not getting shot. Or he's rotating, stressing himself. Shooting me and not shooting the T-70. Which at this moment is my points hoard. And if my yeah. T-70 can plink that one damage through on another ship. Then I'm I'm golden basically. Because my T-70 is worth more than Tally. But takes a lock onto, onto my T-70 and... Um, boost. And boost. And then this... And then focus boost. Now this is the turn... That I don't want to say costs my opponent the game, but probably costs my opponent the game. Uh, there is I a mean, you, you said you didn't want to say it, then you said it. So uh, let's just like let's be, be honest, Sean. You, you said it. This, um, there is a lock on each of my ships from each of his ships, and he's just locked the T70 with Tally, right. So he's focus boosted into range one of me with a fo with a focus. And it means I've got a, if I don't die, I've got a range one focus lock shot coming back to deal it's one. It's not like your T your T seventy still has a shield, so yeah. it's not you're not likely to die to pose shot. Tally it maybe might lock out, but So he thought that Tally's lock was his lock. Um, right. Okay. I, I said to him after, so I, was like, I was a little surprised you didn't just hang back at range two, probably maybe three, and lock focus because I feel like that's going to net you more damage with less chance of you getting that one damage back, and then the next turn you can just move in. Right. Um. But yeah, you see it here. So post. Right. Sometimes you forget who has got oh, the lock. So, uh, post shoots. Oh. Yeah. Rolls one crit and three blanks. Uh, which I evade. Um, Tally rolls one hit, which I take on the shield, uh, and then and I get demolish Poe. I get four results, which is enough to kill Poe. Um, so yeah, now it's a, now it's a one health Tally against a T seventy, I think, with four and Kaz with two left, and I just yeah, I turn in, I focus with the. T seventy, I one hard and barrel roll behind with Cass. So I've got a range one and a range zero shot. Um I, ironically I don't think I actually get the, lives. Yeah, I don't think I get the damage through. Because that's game over. And that's game over. Um 
Or maybe I did, and I just didn't put the results. We didn't put it on. I'll have a look at the the scores. But yeah, it was it was an interesting game because it's it felt like it was swinging back and forth a little bit. Um, never strongly in my opponent's favour, I don't think. But it wasn't like it wasn't comfortable for me for a lot of the time. Yeah, like I mean, when when he had the two ships, I, I like two high initiatives against your two low initiatives. I was like, like he should just clean this up. Yeah, I think especially with trigger happy Poe. Yeah, I think that missing where the lock was, um, wasn't you know did cost him because if he'd if he'd got three four results there, halved the T seventy, or even worse, and then. You know, finished it off with Tally. Yeah. And that would have been a realistic outcome. Um, but, but there we go. It turns out even when I am getting art dodged, I can still win. So, you know, that was a double slap in the face from Sith Takers in that game. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was interesting because I hadn't. <coughs> excuse me. I hadn't quite clocked the the severity of self bumping because I tend to do it quite a lot with this list because they have enough passive mods that you don't necessarily need the focus. I mean obviously it helps, but it doesn't cripple the list. But then suddenly taking a lot of damage can do. Um I got lucky with the obstacles. Yeah. Very lucky with the obstacles. Like, um, could Kaz have died to that rock? No, I think it was on three at that point. I suppose if it took a crit, in theory. No, you just take damage, like, don't you? Oh, well, it's hit, it's hit a crit for a crit. Is it? I just thought it was hit crit. You take a damage now. No, I'm pretty sure it's hit a crit for a crit. But, Same okay. with debris. Fair. Um. But yeah, it's two point five will be interesting. Uh, ironically, this list almost fits. You just, ironically, you change out the generic i three for Kai i four, and that yeah. fits. So, but I'm not sure how well it does at the objectives. Well, funny enough, actually, because Chris basically played this list with some changes, um, and he was saying at the end, like he actually was. Thinking that maybe Jess gets dropped. Yeah. Because you need to split up on some on the objectives. Yeah, that's that's it, isn't it? You either need... But uh... at, the, at the same time, actually, I'm wondering, like, maybe not necessarily, it just, needs, it just needs a different start. Because, like, on some objectives, you split up, then you regroup. Yeah. So... I mean, it's, uh, we just have to see how things shake out. Like, yeah. I think Jess is still going to be strong. Well, of course, she's she's got an amazing ability. Um, yeah, I think you need you need some you need stuff that can either work semi independently, at least for a period of the time, or weight of numbers, so that yeah. when you split up, it's not a single ship. Okay, but that was a, oh yeah, that was a an interesting game. Um, my opponent. Is actually down in Cornwall uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks. So I told him to give us a message uh, if he fancies a game of In Life X Men. If he happens to be down oh, while nice. we're, well, we're meeting up, so that'd be that'd be lovely. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good game, and it's a an interesting look towards two point five, and it will be interesting to see it, you know, with the objectives. And uh, I'm, I'm. I think there's going to be some balance issues. Well, yeah, but they're, they're all. I mean, there's balance issues after standard points updates anyway. That's why yeah. we why we get emergency updates, and this is a a major major change. So I think things will. They may take a while. We might have eight months of. You know, some real imbalance, but. Yeah, I just like I'm outraged that the community is not up in arms that the that the fearsome predator is a five point <laughs> ship for some bizarre reason. I want to know which dev got destroyed by fearsome predators. 
that they jacked up its price. Go go and find Chick and ask him where the fearsome predator touched him. <laughs> like, I mean, I, actually, my other theory is, did they misread the rules? Do they think the condition is you apply one for each ship you take? I mean, if that's how they want to play it... Well, actually, I'm not like, sure. Because like, like, that's not how it works. Like, I, I, I don't see a reason for it to be five points when all the other tri-fighters are four. Yeah. It's just weird. Anyway, that's my rant. I just was... That's that's the only one that really was like, I don't understand that costing in Separatists. That's I'm fair. sure each faction has their own, I don't understand that cost. Yeah. I mean, case but like the Resistance only having one, two cost in the entire faction. Yeah. Bucket, I believe. It is Bucket, who has no upgrades. Can't even take the title. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, I feel like every faction has that ship, has that that two cost that has no upgrades that is there as filler. I mean, yeah, like, why are the torrents fours? Because they have a lot of loadout slots for missiles. Like, I know, you can but fit barrage rockets on all of them. That's pretty good. It's still a torrent. It's no, but I think I think barrage rockets will make torrents like actually good. Maybe, maybe. I am curious what the uh, the proton cannon is. Yeah, um, and the homing torpedo. Oh, that's the epic one, isn't it? No, no, that's tracking torpedo. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so we'll have to wait for that one. So can we can we assume that we're likely to get an announcement for probably the rogue class and the clone Z ninety five soon then? Maybe. In fact, actually, let's. I haven't looked in a while. I always go to. Uh, I always go to the Marvel Crisis Protocol Discord to check for AMG updates. Okay, they haven't updated anything interesting. Just world stuff. No one cares about that. Right, guys. We will wrap it up there for this week. Uh, thank you, as ever, for for listening. Uh, Next week, we will try and get a full game of 2.5 in to have a look at. In fact, I've got a feeling, Sam, you and I will play a game and we'll, we'll do yeah. a rundown on it, which will be quite quite fun. Uh, yeah. But until then, we'll just say goodbye. Yeah, ta-ta for now. See you in the future. Enjoy this new world of X-Wing. So I've looked at all the upgrades that come with it, and I might have to buy a Razor Crest. <laughs> really? There's like like notorious and what well, the other one and then like the child because enduring got, is the one I'm interested in. Actually, that's it, that enduring and that um, might be clutch and the child because it comes in because um, it's for it's rebels, rebels and I'm sure.